All right, so we picking up from where we left off with the mysteries of the Silent Brotherhood of the East, chapter 21. Yahshua, the prophet, have finished his tasks and must now go to the sons of men with love divine and peace on earth. The work of Yahshua was done. And now he must go to teach the sons of men. And in the temple, he stood and said, the son of man has come to bring the light, the light of life. And all the brothers stood and said, this is a royal day for all the hosts of the earth. For salvation has come to all children of men. Six times before the bar, and six times a conqueror. And six times. So remember all these uh, degrees, right? So this was the sixth degree. It went to the first degree all the way to six, right? And chapter 19 would be his sixth added lesson that he conquered. After that, as you can see, they're not called numbers no more. Now it's the Adab Chamber of the Dead in the senior course of study, right? So we have six Adab lessons, right? So now we could put that in context. Six times before the bar, six times a conqueror of his lessons, right? And then one said to Yahshua, brother man, most excellent of men, in all the temple tests, you have one out. Upon your brow, I place this diadem. Right? And when you look up diadem, what is that? You'll see it's a, uh, a jewel or a headpiece that signifies sovereignty or a noble, noble status. And uh, you see most, the most famous pictures of noble Jew Ali, he have a turban with a diadem, right? <clears throat> Brown jewel with the feather, right? Holding the feather in place, a diadem. All right. Um, so upon your brow, I place this diadem and in the great assembly of all the world in heaven, you are the master, <laughs> mastermind of all. Man can do no more, but Allah himself will speak and confirm your title. Go your way and teach peace on earth, goodwill to man. And while the hierophant or high priest or magician yet spoke, the temple bells rang out in love, and the Logos journeyed on his way, a conqueror, right? So the Logos, we already learned in the previous lessons that uh, it's the activation of your own, you know, God-like faculties. Um, and he's known as the conqueror, right? Because he's, he's conquered all these lessons, right? Thus far. Um, as you can see, this was a short chapter, but you know, open the floor, have some discussions about this. Islam. Islam. <laughs> um, Basically, uh, I guess it's good to also see that the tests do stop, that there's a point where you become officially, like, uh, the world is the test now, not, not, it's not directly throwing them at you, but they're saying you, you, you pass enough now that we know you won't taint anybody with the message so you can be off the leash. <clears throat> so basically, that's what I'm trying to get to. <laughs> That's what I think we're all trying to get to is that level where no matter what we come up against, our answer comes from the heart and from the source. 
you know, so it, it unifies and brings harmony as opposed to uh, igniting something in our ego or some other, you know. Right. <clears throat> wow. Mm -hmm. Anybody else had any thoughts? All right, so let's transfer to Raj Vita Kata. So this would be um, in an in-depth review. Most people should know what Raj Vita Kata is. Um, if not, <clears throat> we'll go into it right now. But most most people that do know what it is, it's just you know, case law. Uh, res is just a thing decided. Judicata, you know, adjudicated. Right, the thing adjudicated. <clears throat> case law, right? All right. So in general, a judgment is res judicata, not only as to all matters litigated and decided by it, but also as to all relevant issues which could have been but were not raised and litigated in the suit, right? Case law to support Supreme Court Heiser versus Woodruff argued March, March 5th, 1946 and decided April 26, 1946. The fundamental doctrine of res judicata rests at the core of our judicial system. The fundamental doctrine of res judicata is the constitutional mandate that all courts in the United States must give full faith and credit to the decisions of other courts, be they territorial, state, federal, or special tribunals. U.S. Constitution, Article 4, Section 1. Again, <clears throat> the full faith and credit principle furthers the goals of certainty, finality, and comedy in legal dealings with our nation. Res judicata is a general and well-established doctrine conceived in the light of the maxim that the interest of the state requires there be an end to litigation, a maxim which comports with common sense as well as public policy. And that was a quote from Federated Department Stores Incorporated versus Moiti. All right. Res judicata is a principle or maxim in law that deals with cases already adjudicated and said cases either quotes or the case itself is then used for substantiating the accuser or defendant's proof of claim, the expression of pre-existing rights, constitutional enforcement, the adherence to due process, or <clears throat> commanding the court to act on a matter, make a decision or issue a judgment or decree in your favor and others. Res judicata, also known as claim preclusion, is the Latin term for a matter already judged. It refers to either two concepts. In both civil law and common law legal systems, a case in which there has been a final judgment and is no longer subject to appeal, and the legal doctrine meant to bar or preclude continued litigation of a case on same issues between the same parties. In this latter usage, the term is synonymous with issue preclusion. In the case of res judicata, the matter cannot be raised again, either in the same court or in a different court. A court will use res judicata to deny reconsideration of a matter 
the doctrine of res judicata is a method that is a method of preventing injustice to the parties of a case supposedly finished, but perhaps also or mostly a way of avoiding unnecessary waste of resources in the court system. Res judicata does not merely prevent failure judgments from contradicting earlier ones, but also prevents the litigants from multiplying judgments and confusion. Res judicata includes two related concepts, claim preclusion and issue preclusion, also called collateral estoppel or issue estoppel. <clears throat> Though sometimes res judicata is used more narrowly to mean only claim preclusion. Claim preclusion bars a suit from being brought, up again, uh, brought again on an event which was the subject of a previous legal cause of action that has already been finally decided between the parties or those in privity with a party. Issue preclusion bars the relitigation of issues of fact or a law that have already been necessarily determined by a judge or jury as part of an earlier case. Res judicata is intended to strike a balance between competing interests and primary purpose is to assure an efficient judicial system. A related purpose is to create repose and finality. Justice Stewart explained the need for this legal precept as following. Federal courts have traditionally adhered to the related doctrines of res judicata or claim preclusion and collateral estoppel or issue preclusion under RJ. A final judgment on the merits of an action precludes the parties from relitigating issues that were, that were or could have been raised in that action. Under collateral estoppel, once a court has decided an issue, a fact, or a law necessary to a judgment, that decision may preclude a relitigation of the issue in suit on a different cause of action involving a party to the first cause as this court and other courts have often recognized, res judicata and collateral estoppel relieve parties of the costs and venation of multiple lawsuits, conserve, judi judicial, uh, conserve judicial resources, and by preventing inconsistent decisions, encourage reliance on adjudication. So here are a couple of examples of res judicata, or read a couple. So Ab Abbott Laboratories versus Granite State um, Inst Company. In quote, <clears throat> cross -breed, politics and the Constitution in the history of the United States, chapter 24, in particular, 916 through 19, as Professor Krosky has also pointed out, under a reading that the term laws include common law as well as le uh, legislation. <clears throat> so this is case law supporting res judicata. Within this case law, it's talking about how case law is law, right? Common law as well as litigation. A federal decision on any substantive, we look up substantive, that's just apparent, like it is there, clearly, like, you know. Um, substantive common law question would then become binding on all state courts. Failure or refusal, refusal of a state court to follow that decision would then pose a federal question. And when you look up the term federal question, that means your constitutional rights were violated. That's a terminology, federal question. <laughs> or diversity of citizenship. Those are typically two um, reasons why I won't sue 
someone would be in federal court. So, <clears throat> more res judicata. United States Supreme Court case Durfee versus Duke. The constitutional command of full faith and credit. Remember, we're still in the space of Article 4, Section 1. Right, full faith and credit on case law, which is res judicata. Right, public acts, we're still in that space. <clears throat> the constitutional command of full faith and credit as implemented by Congress generally requires every state to give to a judgment at least the res judicata effect which the judgment will be accorded in the state which rendered it. Res judicata is part of a national jurisprudence. The principles of res judicata apply to questions of jurisdiction as well as to other issues, as well to jurisdiction of the subject matter as to the parties. Anything decided on. Case law, public records, house resolutions, is law. <laughs> Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court case, Bagley versus Moxley. Quote, res judicata is the generic term for various doctrines by which a judgment is, which a judgment in one action has the binding effect in another. Right, a judgment in one action has a binding effect in another. More case law, right? Hickok versus Hickok. Quote, the court has recognized that the doctrine of res judicata is most important in assuring that judgments are conclusive, thus avoiding relitigation issues that were or could have been raised in the original action. All right. More res judicata, Anderson versus Phoenix. <clears throat> Application of the doctrine may serve to relieve parties of the cost and uh, vexation of multiple lawsuits, conserve judicial resources, and by preventing inconsistent decisions, encourage reliance on adjudication. All right. So as you know, more case law. Uh, let me skip down to mental competence. Because the whole idea is just to know <clears throat> case law and how it's connected and why it should be looked at as law. Uh, not only the case law says case law is law, which is funny, but um, everything leads back to the role of uh, full faith and credit, Article 4, Section 1. All right, so mental competence. Law definition, law definition of competence, off top status, right? Competence determines your status, concerns the mental capacity of an individual to participate in legal proceedings or transactions and the mental condition of a person must have to be responsible for his or her decisions or acts. Competence is an attribute that is decision specific, depending on various factors which typically revolve around mental function, integrity. An individual may or may not be competent to make a particular medical decision a particular contractual agreement to execute an effective deed to real property or to execute a will having certain terms. Depending on the state, a guardian or conservator may be appointed by a court for a person who satisfies the state's test for general incompetence. And the guardian or conservator exercises the incompetence rights for the incompetent. Defendants who do not possess sufficient competence 
are usually excluded from criminal prosecution, while witnesses found not to possess the requisite competence cannot testify. <clears throat> right? We have the definition of competence, a couple examples in certain contexts, but we're dealing with which you know. And um, there was an element in this definition that made me think of contract law as far as, um, you know, a minor can't be part of a contract. Um, yeah, correct. Right, your, a particular contractual agreement. Depending on your con competence, you can't even be a party to that. All right, so competent. Law definition of competent. Duly qualified. Answering all requirements. Having sufficient ability or authority. Possessing the requisite natural or legal comp uh, qualifications. Able, adequate, suitable, sufficient, capable, legally fit. And see also incompetency. A testator, as an example, a testator may be said to be competent, quote unquote, if he has mental capacity to understand the nature of his act, to understand and recollect the nature and situation of his property and his relations to persons having claims on his bounty and whose interests are affected by his will. So that's back to knowing how to administer your estate, knowing who is who, knowing your position. Right. Um, Law definition of in, uh, incompetency, lack of ability, legal qualification, right? Lack of legal qualification, lack of fitness to discharge the required duty, right? Court case in Ray Leonard's estate. And here's an estate case. Well, there you have it. If this was an estate case, dealing with competency or the latter. In New York, the word incompetency is used to designate the condition or legal status of a person who is unable or unfit to manage his own affairs by reason of insanity, imbecility, or feeble-mindedness, and for whom, therefore, a committee may be appointed. And such a person is designated as or designated an incompetent. So back to as we'll see, minority or that political caste system minority, you're dealing with a class of people that are incompetent of their nationality, that have no customs, traditions, don't know law, and um, they fall in that bracket. Minority deals with the mental state of a person. It's a legal status. Infants are minors, but only until they grow, not only physically, but mentally. And that is when they reach a status of majority. So minor, law definition of minor, an infant or person who is under the legal or mental competence. Also, of less consideration, a person of inferior condition. Minority, a mental state or condition of a minor, which we just read, or infancy. Ward, law definition of ward. Guardian, care, charge as the ward of a castle. So in the phrase watch and ward or ward of the court or infants and persons of unsound mind, right? 
So he put all these things together. I'm a bad Islam. <clears throat> Islam, peace and love, big bro. Islam to the Moors, what's good? Islam. Islam. As far as I, you know, anybody have any questions before we transition to the, uh, I'll say the contract segment. No questions on res judicata, anything of that nature. Islam, I have one on res judicata. Just in, in double jeopardy, when they when you basically can't get charged for the same crime twice, is that similar to like using a case to say you can't be charged for the same thing because of the case is already been cleared? Is exactly. that similar? Yeah. Okay. It's, already, it's already been decided. Yeah. In general, yeah, um, yeah. Islam. See, Islam. I just wanted to add that word "ward." It it's kind of ringing a bell now that I look at the different definition. Because in in Spanish, like to uh, to protect something or to to hold something for somebody and to like guard it is guardar. So yeah, it's crazy. Guardar, guard like guarding, ward, guardar. It's just interesting how all these words have its origin and stuff like that. That's Etym all. Etymology, right? Yep. The study of the origin of words. Yeah. Yeah, man. Anybody else got anything for transition? So, once again, um, <clears throat> we got Article One, Section Ten. Um, there's a lot of things in here. I'm highlighting just the contract aspect. But of course, we know it's done with, you know, gold and silver coin, um, then the tender for payment of debts. We also know it's specific instructions not to pass any bill of attainer, which will be um, basically saying you're guilty without proper due process. Um, we also know ex post facto is an element in Article 1, Section 10, dealing with no law shall be passed after the fact of this contract, the uh, Constitution Treaty, and any pre existing engagements, right? All right. But me specifically, I'm highlighting the aspect of make no law impairing the obligation of contracts. That's what I'm highlighting for tonight. Article 1, Section 10 says no law, no law shall be made, period, impairing the obligation of contracts. Once a contract is executed and it's done, it's done, especially if all the uh, bullet points of uh, contract law are met, in which we know a couple of them, which will make a contract not binding, would be, um, you know, one of the participants of the minor. We know a unilateral contract is not um, binding. What's a unilateral contract? If it's three parties, four parties involved in the contract and only one signature and not four signatures or three, whatever many parties involved, that would be an example of a non-binding contract. Um, you know, so, all right, so, a contract, right? So I want to go to the Black's Law Dictionary and we'll review treaty. A treaty, right? Just in law. This law, what a treaty is, law definition of treaty, right? So we have an agreement. League. League is just a confederation. 
or contract, right? Let's let's put you know let's put all this together. Let's let's be competent because we already see where I'm going. You feel me, humble bay? It's divine. So Islam. Let's let's use intellectual faculty. We already see where I'm going with this. But you just gotta be already there and take all your tools and know how to just flow chart it out in your mind, right? So we know Article 1, Section 10 says no obligations on contractors. Once a contract is done, that's the law, right? So let's transition to treaty, an agreement, league, or contract between two parties or more nations of sovereigns formally signed by commissioners, properly authorized and solemnly ratified by the several sovereigns or the supreme power of each state, case law to support. A treaty is not only a law, but also a what? A contract between two nations and must, if possible, be so construed to give what? Full force and effect to and its parts, contracts. I mean, case law to support that, right? I mean, it's definitely more, but I, I just wanted to highlight that. This Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition, public record. Um, I guess I'll read a little more because I see something that caught my eye. So why not? So we're dealing with private law. Treaty of peace. Sound familiar? This is a this is a law term. But it's not familiar, right? Treaty of peace. An agreement or contract. Back to the contract, Article 1, Section 10 is linked up. And, and mind you, Article 6 is going to take you to any pre-existing contracts because the treaty was before the Constitution, right? An agreement or contract made by belligerent parties in which they agree to lay down their arms and by which they stipulate the conditions of peace and regulate the manner in which it is to be restored and supported. Sounds like the articles in the treaty to me. Right? All right. So that that was the, the contract piece. Um, I'm gonna transition to like commercial aspects. I'm gonna stay in this dictionary. But any questions in that space? As far as ways to looking at what a contract is. Islam. Islam. That was dope, bro. And not only that, but looking at the right to contract and then coupling that with the right to association with the fact that we even have government in our own nation, you know, it, it is irrevocable in the first place. And, you know, what Noble Drew Ali did, it just put an extra stamp on it, but that was that was fire. That was like a whole lecture right there in like five minutes. That was yeah. fire. Yeah, it's wow. It's wow. It's wow. Anybody, anybody else? Any thoughts on this matter? On this matter? Contract matter. All right. All right, so. Um, I think we had an issue with Matazamanji. Not an issue, but Matazamanji got pulled over by um, the sheriff. And, um, you know, she saw the nationality card and ultimately was let go. So, When we're dealing with commercial, and this is, of course, a uh, review. But for one matter of fact, let's stay in the T section. Since we're in the T section, let's deal with what they call a traffic violation. And then we'll look at it from a couple of different angles. All right. 
All right, so when you're looking up traffic in law or what traffic is, what traffic is you're dealing with commerce, which is short for commercial trade or exchange of merchandise, right? So once again, if you're not operating for hire, you're not operating in commerce. And before I further on that matter, let's just go to driver. Well, definition of driver real quick. Oh, there we go. The PDF is crazy, and it's different than that real book. But it'll do. I'm looking up driver. <clears throat> Section. Damn, I can take this somewhere else. But essentially, driver. When you look up driver, it's going to say. One employed. One employed. One employed. To do what? To be in an you know, automobile, a coach, a wagon. Right. For hire, yeah. For hire. It's interesting how this goes to a whole other section, though. It's almost like they got sabotage. But this ain't got nothing to do with it. Are you in the ease? What is that? No, it's like a whole other section, like code of responsibility. I got a um I got a fifth edition at hand. You want me to grab and go in there? Yeah, just look up Brian. All right, hold on. I already got it on the fourth. There we go. You said you said drive or driver? Driver. Right, okay. Driver, a person actually doing doing driving, whether employed by owner to drive or driving his own vehicle. For for a hire, right? Um employed, basically employed to do both. right. Well basically right, employed by an owner, right. Okay. So that's what I'm getting at when you say driver's license. When you put that in context now, what, what do you have? You have you're saying I, I'm it's a license to conduct commerce, right? So when you go down the thing, you're saying you're and back to the somebody brought up voluntary, but you're voluntarily putting yourself in that position to be regulated under what they call traffic, right? And that's what we just read. 
that traffic is dealing with regulation of commerce. All right. And I want to just get a visual just just because I just don't make no sense. Well, I didn't be able to see it in myself. But um, I'm going to get the visual and transfer to something that's codified in the California Vehicle Code, expressing the same thing. And then, like I said, this is more ammo or just different ways to kind of skin the cat or, you know, look at things. Can you stop that commerce? Mm, I stopped. The last thing I looked at was uh, traffic. I'm looking. I'm looking for driver just to get a visual. So we know we're recording, so I want to just at least get it up there. It's a thick book, huh? <laughs> That's a big book. Thick book. I wonder if uh, the fourth edition is like the the thickest book out of all, all the law dictionaries. So what if you're on your way to like to a pop-up? Would that be considered commerce? On your own behalf? Uh, no, no, because you're not trap. You're not traveling for hire. Like you're not, you're not a taxi or Uber or nothing like that. So you're not chauffeuring people around. You're getting paid for it. You no. Know? And then once again, the, the license kicks it off. The driver's license kicks it off. Because remember, you're the you're the cargo. That's how it's being looked at. You're the commerce. You know when they when you watch the news and they'd be like um, a helicopter in the sky, and they just they'll be casually talking and they'd be like, oh, the traffic. They be looking at the traffic, right? That's the <laughs> they're looking at the commerce, the people in the right. That's that's the traffic. That's how they're looking at it. I think you just passed it. Yeah. It's, yeah, you just passed driver. That's exactly what I was thinking when you was reading traffic. Like they've seen all the money passing by. Yeah. How long did you get there? Right. Yeah, so I just wanted to just like get a visual on this. So like the brother just read earlier, one employed in conducting or operating a coach, carriage, wagon, or other vehicle. Oh, this is a little slightly different word. I think he had fifth edition. But regardless, one employed to do these things. And if you're not employed to do these things, you're not a driver. Right? That's the whole point. And um for one to have a driver's license, you're basically volunteering and saying, I'm I'm commerce or I'm you know conducting commerce. So therefore, I want to be regulated under what's called traffic. And we just looked up traffic. And what did that say? Commerce. All right. So for there to be a traffic violation, that means it's a commercial violation, right? All right, so I just wanted to just keep that in the forefront of your mind. So here we have um, California Vehicle Code Section 260, and it's dealing with a commercial vehicle. Is a motor vehicle or a type required to be registered under this code? Used or maintained for the transportation of persons for hire, compensation, compensation or profit. 
right? So it's essentially um, codified in their colorable codes. You have things like this to just kind of reinforce the whole traffic thing, right? So you're not, you're saying you're not under this. Um, and once again, it's just how we went about it, how we put the ducks in a row. We didn't just simply use this section 260 of, of their colorable codes. Um, matter of fact, it even goes further. Passenger vehicles and house cars are not used for transportation of persons for higher compensation or profit and are not commercial vehicles. Right. Um, so not only did we use this, but we set the foundation of what traffic was, or what commercial is, what a driver is. All right. Uh, that's pretty much what I had. Any questions on that? All right.